Hi, I'd like to show you uh, something that's very cool that uh, many people don't know about, especially those who aren't doing developing, but I think it has some uh, interest for everyone. It's called the Data Ref Tool. Now, first, a little bit background on what Data Refs are. Data Refs uh, are for X-Plane. There's a similar structure in FSX and prepared called variables. And these are internal variables in the simulator that keep track of things like the heading and the whether switches are on or off or the uh, course or any number of things, outside air temperature and so on. And these are things that if you're developing third party add-ons like external panels, which I do with uh, Air Manager, you need some way to access these variables. There's also commands in uh, X-Plane. There are ways to tell the simulator to do something. Think of a command as telling the simulator to do something like turn the pitot heat on or turn the pitot heat off or toggle the pitot heat. The tool data ref tool is only for X planes. What I'd like to do is uh, show you how data ref tool works and why it might be interesting for you to have. It's a free add on a fellow named Lee Baker uh, did a great job. So I, I first found it about three years ago. There used to be a product called data ref editor. And in fact, it's still out there that you can use to, to view these internal variables. But uh, the data ref tool has far outdone uh, what anything that data ref editor could do. Um, and I'll show you some of those things here in just a moment. So let's open the data ref editor. Uh, if you've installed it in the plugins folder, and it's as easy as just dragging it into the uh, plugin folder, which is in the resources folder of Xplane. Uh, it's uh, a fat plugin which can run on Linux or uh, Windows or Mac. And we select uh, data ref tool. And you can see here, I'll just review the menus here quickly. You can view the data refs or the commands. I'll show you that. that's really not important because you can do them all in one, one window. But you can op open both windows if you like and, and separate them. Uh, you can scan for data refs. Uh, you can, in case you've changed something, you can reload the aircraft or the plugins or the scenery because uh, some of the data refs will affect the, all three of those things. And then you can reload plugins on modification. And then you can impersonate the data ref editor. And the reason you need this is some third-party add-ons, they have custom data refs, and these data refs or variables are not uh, visible normally, but there was a fix to data ref editor so that they would be visible. So Lee has created a way to impersonate that to make it think that it's data ref editor so that it'll show you those things. And of course, about data ref tool, which is just uh, some information about where you can uh, find out more about uh, data ref editor. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to open the window and then we'll take a close up. Data ref tool, I'll say view data refs. Okay, so here's the data ref uh, tool open and you can see a large, uh, the window has a scrolling field and this shows all of the data refs that are currently active in the uh, aircraft and simulator that is loaded at this time. And you can see there's thousands of them and it goes on and on forever. So it'd be quite difficult to find things that you want in there. So what we've done is uh, they've, it has the ability to do searches. Now there's a this little red button or green button here is the reg X uh, regular expression search. You can do uh, use that standard nomenclature. If you know that, fine. If you don't, it's beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about, but I'll tell you that it can still be searched by just typing into this field here, let's say bat or battery. And you can see everything that's there is uh, available. And, and you can see there's things that are white. Uh, let's see, aircraft batteries and so on. And if I, uh, let's try flipping the battery switch here. You can see things happen. For example, SIM cockpit electrical battery array on, it's an eight, it's an array with eight elements. You can see that that is zero. And I'll turn it back on. And you see things that have changed turns blue. So I can see that cockpit electrical battery on one. Now this is a variable that's for simple cockpits with just one battery. Uh, some airplanes that have multiple batteries, you can use the eight up to eight batteries for any one aircraft in the, in the X plane. So that's variables. Now the commands down here it shows us, um, see this button here has two positions. It has data for data refs, DAT for data refs, 
COM for commands and D plus C, which means which is the default without anything on. It just shows you it will show you everything, both data refs and commands. In this case, let's go to uh, first data data refs and I'll turn that button on and off again and you can see the values that are changing. There's lots of other ones that have the word BAT in there like uh, battery failures and warnings and limits and so on, all these other variables. And there's quite a lot of them, as you can see. There's quite a lot of them that have BAT in the expression. So that's a possibility. Uh, if you wanted to be fancy, you could put in the little uh, pipe symbol here and put uh, fail. And now it only shows batteries, words that have BAT and FAIL in there. That narrows it down a bit too. But let's get rid of that. Just go back to battery. And you can see that uh, by uh, flipping a switch, you can get an idea of what data refs you might be able to use. So now there's a couple other things we can do here. First of all, we can uh, select, for example, this uh, battery, where is the one we just had? Uh, battery on. We can select this and uh, we can highlight it and copy and cut and paste it. So if we want to use it in a script, we won't have to type it or risk making a mistake. The other thing we can do is, that, of course, that's controlling the battery switch. If it's a writable data ref, and many and most are, some are not, but some are most are, we can put a zero in there and then hit enter. Watch the battery switch. Battery switch, and of course it's highlighted blue because it has just been activated. So you see, um, we can we can try trial values out too um, by entering them in. I'll put a one in there and, and bring it back up. Enter and turn the battery back on. So we can also manipulate values into the uh, into the simulator. Another way to filter is by using the CH button here. Now this uh, let me put a different something that would be changing put pressure in there. You can see there's all the data refs that have pressure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, the CH button and you're going to see a small CH which means it's showing uh, anything that's changing including small changes uh, in recent times uh, the, where the values have changed recently but in small amounts, even small amounts. And if I click the next button it goes to the large CH and that means that something has changed in a large amount. In this case, I'm not sure it's that large of an amount, but it's changing from plus to minus. So it's giving a, a, a preference to that as being a pretty major change. But generally, it's a, a, if there's a large change, it'll show up with this big CH. With it off, it shows everything. And with the small CH, it shows things with, even with small changes. So it basically narrows down as we go forward. Now, the other thing is their commands. Now, commands are, are as I said, they're just uh, telling the simulator to do something. And if we change this to command, now it shows us all the command, simulator commands that have the word, the letters BAT in there. You've got batteries toggle, battery one off, battery one on, battery one toggle, battery two off, battery two on, battery two toggle, and so on. Uh, DC voltage battery. Uh, so, so this is these are very these are commands. Now, these are the same things that you use when you uh, program a joystick button. You can see all of these values uh, in in the uh, simulator when you want to program a certain button to run things in the simulator. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the battery switch, and you can see it turns yellow from green to yellow when it is activated. And then, of course, after a time delay, it goes off. So, we toggled the battery there. Okay, now the cool thing is, let's say you wanted to, uh, let's say you were working with your simulator and you, you put that in there, but it wasn't working and you're trying to figure out if it's a problem with the simulator or a problem with uh, your equipment or what. You can come over to this position over here and you can see that it is on each, each line, maybe a little hard to, to see which line you have, but it, you can reach over here and each line has a, uh, the ability to click a once a begin and an end. So we can click once. Now watch the battery switch when I click this toggle button once. See the battery switch went down. If I click it again, it'll go back up. 
and you see the color change. So this makes it much easier to find things that you want. Now, if you don't search on a specific uh, a specific uh, string, you can see that that it's it's a lot harder to figure out. You can flip the button and then try to you know you flip the uh, switch and then you try to scroll up there fast enough to find which ones change before it it changes back. And it's not always that easy to do. Um, so it's better if you can you can usually like narrow it down at some point to get an idea. Now I'll show you one other thing now as far as data rest. So one more thing to look at when it comes to uh, uh, the uh, controls down here. You see this button that has a small a and a large a, capital A and a small a. Type uh, type bat b a t t in again, and we see we get the commands batteries and toggle. When we can, if we uh, had, right now it'll search uh, independent of the uh, case of the letters. Let's put a capital B in there, and you can still see it finds the battery. But if we click this button, because none of these up here have a capital B, little a, where uh, the way it's written, if we click this, and you can see they disappeared because there is no no B A T capital B little A T T. But if we turn that back off, put the little b back in there, and it shows back up. So that's probably about all I know about Data Ref Editor. I use it routinely to try to figure out what's going on in the simulator and to figure out how to, uh, with Air Manager, to cause my panel switches to control the sim. So I find it very useful. Um, it's by Lee Baker. Uh, I'll put the reference in the uh, listing below and the description below so that you can find it if you need to download it. It's a free piece of software. It's great. I will plug another great thing that Lee came up with, and that is a program called Plane Command for X-Plane. And it is a uh, voice recognition system that allows you to control the simulator using voice commands. Gear down, set uh, radio 124.7 and so on. Uh, it allows you, it's just great for virtual reality flying because uh, you know how hard it is to manipulate the controls. A lot of the things that you would be uh, picking up your uh, controller to try to, to reach on the screen and control, which is kind of a pain in the butt if you're flying with a yoke and throttles like I do. Um, it's it's just like I'm back in the airlines. I say uh, gear down and the and the simulator puts the gear down and the female voice says gear down. So it's uh, it's uh, pretty cool. I suggest you support him and uh, kind of say thank you to him for this great tool that he supports for free, this data ref tool. And if you're going to do any kind of developing at all uh, and you're using, especially if you're using the data ref editor, uh, try the data ref tool uh, because it's it's way better, way easier to use and, and a lot more capability. I'm sure there's many more things it can do that I'm not aware of, but uh, the way I use it, those are the things that I routinely use, and I thought I'd share those with you because I didn't see a really good video on YouTube about data ref tool. Hope to see you again soon on another video.